Hi, Les from Thailand here. And today's video is gonna be maybe some good news is coming out of Thailand because of this COVID situation thing. They're reassessing the money that the tourism makes here in Thailand and the retirees, how much contributions we make towards the Thailand economy. And I've read quite a few reports and I'm just gonna basically outline some of the the good points with regard to their thought process of, of attracting retirees here to Thailand. Now the first thought, the first thing that they put, they're looking for retirees to spending about 100,000 baht per month. Well, if you live here in Thailand, it's very hard to spend 100,000 baht a month if there's two of you. And you could live a good life here on, 50, as I do, 50,000 baht a month. Watch my video up there, living on 50,000 baht a month. I'm at present living here in my wife's farm. So if I'd retired and decided to live at my wife's farm, there's no mortgage on this house. It's a nice farm. Um, she lives with a, a mum and dad next door. So as far as family wise is concerned, I'd be absolutely quids in because I wouldn't have to pay any rent to live here. So I could live here with 32,000 baht a month. And that, that's what a lifestyle for living here for 32,000 baht a month. So it is possible. You find a girl who has a house and no mortgage and no debts. Uh, okay, we're living up country up in Karat, but what a beautiful location. I'll put some videos on uh, whilst this video has been shown of the, the location that we're in. It, it's a stunningly beautiful countryside location. There's no bars, there's no real restaurants. We live in a little village. There's no other English speaking people that I know of close by. So it's a different way of living. But then I was going to live in the center of France with no, in the village that I bought the land, there was one English person that came for three months a year for holidays and, and that's it. Excuse me waving my hands. There's literally black little flies are everywhere. It's the summer months and uh, they're everywhere. So, excuse me for waving my hands. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, um, so the good news is they're gonna alter the way people can buy houses up here in Thailand. So the ratio of condo units, let's say 100 units, it has to be 51% Thai and 49% Farang or foreigner, foreigner owned. If the ratio is the other way around, where the foreigners own 51% and the Thais own 49, you will not be able to sell your condo to another foreigner. It'd have to be a Thai person who could buy because the ratio of foreigners to Thai is the wrong way around. And the rule of being able to own your condo. Yes, you can own your condo, but then there's still restrictions on being able to live in that or sell that condo once you've got it. So now that they're going to alter that process up to 80% foreign owned. So there's still going to be a 20% ownership by ties in let's use the 100 condos as a rule. So 80 allowed to be by foreigners and 20 by ties. I suppose uh, at the minute 51% by ties and 49% by foreigners. Now at present you can't own any land here in Thailand and I think that's a good re I think that's a good way of dealing with it. Um, I mean, look at England, look at London. London doesn't belong to England. There's Arabs, there's wealthy people from China, wealthy people from America who own vast swathes of London. Now, when you imagine Thailand, there's many, many beautiful places in Thailand. So therefore, the people with the money would come along and buy vast swathes of Thailand and develop it and make it totally unaffordable for Thai people to be able to buy in such nice places. So I, I for one, don't begrudge Thailand keeping the land always belonging to Thailand. So Thailand, in effect, will always be Thailand. And I'm okay with that, I've got no problems with that. I'm lucky, I, I live here at my wife's farm up in Karat, and I've, we've also got a house down by the beach in Rayong. So we live in two beautiful places and I have my choice where I want to live, either down there or up here. Again, we're, we're lucky with the fact that we can have that choice, two houses. It would be a dream come true if I ever had that situation where I had a house in the country and a house by the sea in England. Totally un unrealistic for me and my 
High Brigade pension that I live on here in Thailand. Now again, I've done a video living on 50,000 baht a month here in Thailand, and it's over a year old now, but it's still very, very possible to be able to live on 50,000 baht a month here in Thailand. And so the other good news with regard to the looking at various plans, the 90 day reporting, it looks like that might be done and dusted in the next couple of months where they don't ask you to go and do your 90 day reporting as long as you're staying in the same house and then you, you advise them where you're living when you do your retirement visa or marriage visa, whichever way you want to do it. Again, I think it is a waste of time. There's a lot of paperwork. It takes a minute to print the piece of paper out, fill the piece of paper out, go down to the immigration office, which is 45 minutes drive for me, sit in the immigration office five minutes and I get another stamp, come back 90 days later. Now again, as I say, there's a lot of bureaucracy in there and why at the end of the day. Um, that it could be easily so, so done away with, no problems whatsoever. And I think that will be a move to try and make life easier for people who are retired here. Now, my own personal opinion is that Thailand's going through a terrible time at present with regard to no money coming in from tourism. That they should have a look at the retirees who are actually staying here in Thailand and they should maybe help them because at the end of the day, I still spend my money here in Thailand. I spend over 50,000 baht every month here in Thailand. So therefore, am I not worth looking after because I give regular payments here every month? I'm not just a tourist, I live here. So therefore, I think that maybe should be some dispensation levied towards the people who live here. Life should be made a little bit simpler, a little bit easier. A lot of people here complain about the immigration process. Now, I think immigration, no matter where you live in the world, is complicated. I don't think you'll get anybody who will say, oh yeah, the immigration is dead easy, it's so simple, it takes us five minutes to do everything, no matter where it is in the world. So just, just expect immigration is going to be a pain in the backside, wherever you are in the world. So just take that in the chin. Every 12 months, I go and get my marriage visa. It's a pain in the backside. It takes three or four weeks to prepare for. I do all the paperwork. And once it's over and done with it's 11 months worry-free, apart from doing the 90 days, which hopefully that'll get swept under the carpet next month or in the next two months or so. Also in Thailand, that they're on about making it easier for foreigners to be able to work. For instance, say when I first moved to Thailand, I ran a little coffee shop and I invested in, in the coffee shop. I refurbished it, refitted it, and my Thai girlfriend at the time worked in the coffee shop. So therefore, my investment employed a Thai person. And if it was successful, then I would have employed maybe another two or three Thai people in that restaurant. But I wasn't allowed to work. I wasn't allowed to even clear the tables for fear of being caught by the immigration and getting fined or even deported from the um, Thailand. So therefore, I think if, if you're prepared to invest in Thailand, if you're prepared to invest in a coffee shop or a laundromat or anything like that, you should be able to at least do a little bit of work. And I think that they might be looking at that also, trying to make it a little bit more possible for relax the rules a little bit for anybody who wants to work here in Thailand if you're going to make an investment into Thailand. So there's many things that they're looking at over the next two or three months. Um, I heard on the grapevine next month, May, they're going to be making some sound suggestions. There's lots of information being banded around, around the various uh, social sites and websites and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's good news for those people who live here and want to work here and want to retire here. I still love Thailand, I still love its its people, I still love its location, I, I still wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. I'm heart and soul into Thailand and therefore I'll jump through the hoops wherever hoops I need to jump through because it's still better to live here in Thailand than it would be for me to live in England. So I hope this video has been informative and I hope you've got something from it and I hope you've learned something from it. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Leave your comments down below. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand, until the next video, bye for now.